Most of us humans are incredibly hard on ourselves. We put this immense pressure on ourselves to, to perform and to get everything right and to get the job and get the guy or girl and whatever it is. And we, we, we put all this pressure on ourselves. And it even, like, whenever I get ready to speak or talk, I have this, uh, this inner critic in my head that somehow convinces me that if, if I don't get 10 million views on this and become the next Brene Brown uh, or Oprah Winfrey or whoever, that, that, uh, that I'm an abject failure. I just, I've, I've blown it. I've blown my chance. And do you ever uh, find that fascinating? And, and maybe for you, it's, it's, uh, it was making the team or getting the job or getting to law school or, or business school. Uh, and I, I don't know what it, what it was for you, but you maybe felt like this abject failure if you didn't do it or you, 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 weren't, you didn't measure up if you didn't do it. Do you ever wonder why that is? Do you ever wonder why we are so hard on ourselves? Uh, it's, it's almost like we've got this, uh, this th th our brain is trying to convince us that and give us, provide enough evidence to prove that we don't measure up. And, but then what, you ever think about that? You ever think like, what if your brain actually gets to enough evidence to say you don't measure up? Do you all of a sudden just disappear and die? <laughs> of course not, of course not. But yet we let, we let our ego just run our lives sometimes. And you know, this ego, it's, it's, it's this voice in your head that tells you to play small. It's this inner critic. It's this, uh, it's this voice that says that you're not good enough, that you don't measure up and insults you and calls you an imposter or a fraud or whatever it is. And for me, my, my ego would tell me that you're not going to make it, whether it was baseball or piano lessons or, um, or going into business or becoming a speaker. My ego would be so full of criticism and, and I didn't know what to do with it. And it would call me an imposter and a fraud and it would, uh, it would kind of fill me with this paralyzing fear. And uh, perhaps you've been there. Perhaps you've, you've wrestled with some of your own dragons as well. And uh, as much as we may not want to talk about them, we've all got these dragons in, inside of us. It may be your ego. Uh, it may be your imposter syndrome. Maybe for you it's anxieties or, or, or a fear of failure. Maybe it's insecurities or a lack of self-confidence. I wonder what your dragons are in this season of your life. And, and then do you ever notice that, that we have this default way of thinking about our dragons? So my guess is if I said, hey, we're going to talk about your dragons today, my guess is you're not super thrilled about it. And if you had a choice between that and front row seats to a, a Bieber concert, uh, we're not talking about your dragons. And, and so we have these dragons, and then we have this default way of relating to them, and, and do um, you ever notice, so if I, if I said, hey, let's talk about your imposter syndrome or your fears or your anxieties, my guess is that uh, if you're like me at all, you get this pit in your stomach and it feels like you're, uh, it's like these invisible forces are, are, are holding you underwater and, and you, you can't even breathe and you feel like you're powerless against them and you just don't know what to do and you tried, you know, a number of different things to try to figure it out, but you can't seem to figure it out and you don't know what to do. And so you keep, you keep just, just trying to do whatever you can. And have you ever wondered uh, if we've gotten it wrong with how we relate to our ego and to our dragons? Have you ever wondered if this, have you ever wondered if your ego is actually your enemy? Your imposter syndrome, your anxieties, your fears, are they actually out to get you? Or have we somehow gotten it wrong? And if, there, if there's anything I've learned in the last 10 years, as, I, as I've really tried to wrestle with this whole thing, is I, I've learned something that really struck me the other day. And it was this idea that, that, uh, that the greatest opportunity for growth that we have in life lies in areas that we're currently wrong about. Our greatest opportunities for growth in life lie in areas that we are currently wrong about, that we, but we're almost certain that we're right about them. And, and so the path forward really begins with this idea of, of, uh, of being not only willing to be wrong, but, but actually searching out the areas that we're wrong, actually setting up systems in our life to find out where are we wrong. 
And I'm, and I'm not talking about, as a caveat, I'm not talking about where you're completely wrong or right. I'm talking about where are the areas in your life where you're 1% wrong with something that matters deeply to you. And that might be relationships, that might be in business, that might be some sort of certain impact in the world. But where might you be 1% wrong? And one of these uh, situations came up for me about five years ago. And I, I, was, I, was, uh, I was working with a therapist. And uh, if, 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 you're, if you've ever been to a therapist, it's almost like uh, they hand you like a cheesecake factory menu and you have to flip through the pages and figure out what's my dragon of the day. You know, it's like this, you know, page after page after page of like, what are we going to work on today? And I had been coming up against uh, a lot of these obstacles in my life at the time. And the one, the, the dragon of the day, if you will, was, was my ego. And my therapist says, uh, okay, I want, you to, I want you to spend some time with your ego. And I said, uh, uh, what does that mean? And, uh, and, and uh, I'm from California. I've lived there for a decade anyway. And uh, so, you know, we're a little bit crazy there. And so this, she says, I want you to just go spend some time with your ego. And, and you're going to do a visualization. I was like, okay. Um, and so she's like, you're going to close your eyes and you're just going to, you're going to go spend some time with your ego. And so I closed my eyes and, uh, and I, and I, I mean, I don't know what to do. So I just close my eyes and start dreaming stuff up. Right. And, uh, and so then I imagine that I've got this dragon and it's, the dragon's name is ego. Okay. All right, here we go. This is my dream. So I figure, all right, ego, you're my enemy. You call me names. You insult me. You beat me up. Like, I want you out of my life. So I was like, great, this is my visualization. So I buy him a one-way ticket to, to the Caribbean islands so he can drink margaritas and surf and most of all, get the hell out of my life. And so I'm like, this is great. I love these visualizations. So I, I have this whole thing. I'm, I'm almost not even in control of this. It's just kind of happening. And so I drive Ego to the airport and I park because I'm a nice person. I walk him all the way to the gate and in my dream, uh, TSA doesn't exist anymore. Uh, and, and so we get all the way to the gate. I buy him a chocolate milkshake because he loves chocolate milkshakes apparently. And uh, we get all the way to the gate and we're sitting there. And, uh, and, and the, soon enough, they start calling for, to board that plane. And so Ego gets up and uh, apparently nobody thinks it's weird. There's like a dragon, you know, about to get on the plane. And so he's, he's walking his way up to the front of the, the line and as he gets up to the front of the line, he kind of looks back at me. He's got this like puzzled look on his face. I do not have a puzzled look on my face. I can't wait to be home free of this thing that, that has been my enemy my whole life. And so I, he gets up to the front. He's about to scan his boarding pass. And I'm like, yeah, here we go. This is great. I'm like home free. And he looks back at me with, again, a puzzled look. And I look back at him. And I'm like, yeah, see you later, pal. And uh, have a nice flight. And uh, he looks down and he goes, what about this? And I go, what about what? And, and it, it, in the film, it was like a film, you could like zoom out and you see that there's a chain connected from my leg to my dragon ego's leg. And I go, oh my, what is this? And, uh, and so then the, the camera zooms in and it's got a tag on it, like a mattress tag that if you take off, you'll go to jail forever. And it says, uh, installed by David Gerber, cannot be removed under any circumstances, indestructible. And I think, indestructible what? And I look back at Ego, now it's starting to get awkward, and, uh, and I look at him and I have this moment, and I am just pissed. And I'm having all these emotions flood into me. It's like I was so close. I'm so close. So ego kind of wanders around a little bit, but he can only go 20 feet because there's a chain attached to his leg. And, and then eventually kind of walks over and sits next to me. And, uh, and I go, okay, well, here we go. Now what are we going to do with this? And so we start talking and I, and I just, my first thing was just like, man, why are you so mean to me? Why are you my enemy? Why do you always beat me up? And uh, why well, he always calling me names? And he, and he, he kind of pauses and he goes, wait, what? He goes, he, he says, you thought I was your, your enemy? And I said, yeah, like wh why, what else would I make of this whole thing? The, the way you call me names, the way you, uh, you know, pick on me and tell me I don't measure up. Like what else am I supposed to make of that? And he goes, man, you've gotten me all wrong. And I go, what? And what he, what he begins to do, and I'll, I'll synopsize the story that the conversation I had with this imaginary dragon in my head, 
that changed my life is he basically said, he, he talked about this difference between uh, a sparring partner and a boxing opponent. And uh, uh, if you were to watch a, like a, a sparring match happening 30, 40 feet off, you might think that the sparring partner is trying to defeat the boxing or the boxer. But the sparring partner is not trying to defeat the boxer. The sparring partner is, trying to, uh, is working to train the boxer to be better for the, 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 the boxing match. And so what he was describing is, is he said, I am not your boxing opponent. I am your sparring partner. And, and it was in that moment that I realized uh, that my ego is not my enemy. My only enemy is when I choose to see my ego as my enemy. My ego is not my enemy. My only enemy is when I choose to see my ego as my enemy. And then it reminded me of, of this the, a philosopher named Joseph Campbell who influenced Star Wars, uh, the story of Star Wars, as well as a number of other uh, Hollywood movies and movies throughout the world. And he said, uh, he said, what if, what if the point of life is not to slay our dragons, but rather to dance with them? What if the point of life is not to slay our dragons, but to dance with them? And that, that idea blew my mind. Is I can, I can see my ego as my enemy and uh, as my boxing opponent, as, as a, the dra like a dragon I've got to slay, or I can see my ego as my best friend. And my advocate, and I can I can choose to dance with these dragons that are, that are that have been tormenting my life, and and so you you, you may be sitting there going, okay, great, I, my ego is my friend, and, and I can dance with my dragons. So so now what? What do I do with this? And I, I've been swinging at this thing for like a decade, through books and mentors and retreats and therapists and coaches and. And there's four main things I've come up with. And there's probably tons more out there in books and that kind of thing. Uh, but there's four main things that have come up for me that have been really powerful. One is, is you've got to figure out what your why is. It, it, the best I understand it is your brain is heavily addicted to being right. And so if you're going to prove your brain wrong, even 1%, you've got to know why you're going to do that. And so that may be relationships with your with your family, your friends. It may be an impact you want in the world, to create in the world. It might be something that breaks your heart that you want to have an impact in. Uh, and so you've got to figure out what is your, like, why? Why are you going to do this? Why are you going to like, basically wrestle with your brain a bit or teach your brain to dance and, and stop tormenting you? So that's number one, figure out your why. Number two is, uh, is you, like, I don't think you can do this outside of mindfulness and meditation. There's a, there's a phenomenal book written called 10% Happier. And it's, it's, it, it talks about how you can actually train your mind so that you have a better, like a, a better like control over it. And, and it's similar to working out with your body. Your, your, your body can get in shape, and so can your mind, and so can your brain. And the only way I've found to really do that is through mindfulness and, and, and meditation practices, because you've got, to have, you've got to spend time training it so that when it comes time, you can choose to have your ego be your, your friend um, versus your enemy. That's number two. Uh, number three is you've got to be looking for areas in your life where you're at least 1% wrong. And you can do that through mindfulness practices. You can do that through feedback from friends and colleagues. You can do that in a number of different ways. So you've got to look for the areas of your life that you're 1% wrong. And usually that opens up a, of a portal for your brain to find out where you might be 5 or 10% wrong as well, or maybe 80% wrong. Who knows? You'll find out. And then number four is you've got to consciously choose what is going to consume your curiosity all day. Because you, you, can, you can allow this idea that you're, you're, you've got to slay your dragons and your ego is your enemy. You can allow that to consume your curiosity. Or you can be consumed with this idea that your ego is your best friend and that you get to dance with your dragons. And if you're willing, if you're one, it, it, that takes some time and effort, just like working out, like a hard workout. It takes a lot of time and consistency. Um, and if you're willing to do that, you're going to realize something. You're, you're going to realize that you've been fighting something your whole life that you were never designed to fight with. Your dragons aren't for slaying. They're for dancing with. Your dragons aren't for slaying. They're for dancing with. And at the beginning, I, I pose this question of, you ever wonder why we do this? And sometimes, there's probably a lot of really good answers for this. But sometimes the reason we do something is simply because we don't know a better way. We didn't know something, we didn't know a better way existed. And so we go with this default mode and we, we let our dragons 
torment us. And it's simply because we didn't know there was a better way. But now we do. And we can start over right now.